back in this morning from Barcelona, Spain, uh, where we, as of this past weekend, have officially been living now for an entire month. One month. Un mes. <laughs> and yeah, on the one hand, it seems like time has absolutely flown by this month, but on the other hand, it feels like five million things have happened since we last checked in. Yeah, both um, are true. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we thought it might be fun to try something new, um, try and start doing some little monthly-ish updates where we come and check in together um, and just kind of share with you some of our highs and lows from the month, our, what we're calling our woes. It's not like woe and lamentation, but woe is like, whoa. Oh, like new stuff that we learned or things that were surprising. Um, as well as you all have been so awesome about checking in with us and asking all sorts of thoughtful questions. Um, so anyway, we thought it could be fun to do a little Q and A each month with some reader questions. So, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Let us know what you think. Here's today's update on our first month here in November. But before we get into it, I made you some coffee. They call this a caffettera italiano, oh. which is like, so I'm in just, just like an Italian style Very coffee European. maker. It's really nice. It just goes right on the stovetop. <laughs> and to make some coffee, which I have lovingly prepared for you. Thank you. Now, we can mm. begin. So, let's start with highs. What have your highs been in our very first month in Barcelona? <sighs> The high for sure is that we actually pulled this off. Like we're actually <laughs> able to be here and we are residents. The government has recognized our presence as <laughs> residents here. And so much of that is due to Ali's sensational administrative skills, getting all the visa stuff organized. So we're thrilled. It was hard work, but we're here. We made it. We did it. Yeah, I'd say another high um, has just been the simple fact that Guys, we love the city even more than we thought we would. Currently, I mean, every day we're still discovering so many new places, even in our neighborhood. It's ridiculous. We'll be walking down the same streets and almost once a day we're like, wait, have you seen that restaurant before? What? Right. What? There's so it's much like here to pop discover. Out of nowhere. And it's gorgeous. Our neighborhood, specifically, El yeah, Born, is love charming. It. And yeah, there's just an energy here that strangely already feels so familiar. Like it already feels, it feels pretty homey. Another huge high point is the climate here. It is so lovely and it, like we're kind of going to get to escape winter. You know, I mean, it's like in the 50s and that is an achievement. absolutely manageable for a couple Midwesterners. <laughs> yeah, it never freezes here, ever. I'm on board. Think about that. Yeah, on the weather note, another thing that goes with that is we have been walking everywhere, which feels so good. We sold our cars when we left the United States, and since we've been here, we've actually literally walked everywhere. We've taken one metro ride and one cab ride in an entire month. Uh, but otherwise, we're walking like 15 to 20,000 steps a day, which has been like an awesome way to see the city, but also it just feels, feels so good. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing about walking is that we currently have no plans. <laughs> our schedule is wide open, so if it's like, 30 minutes to take the metro somewhere or 50 minutes to walk. We're like, let's just walk. We've got the time. Yeah, <laughs> lots of walking. So another high, I don't know if you noticed the different setting behind us, but you guys, we moved. We found our like forever Barcelona apartment. Well, for like one year, we signed a one year lease. So we mentioned in our last apartment tour video that we were planning to be in our last place for two months. Long story short, we were able to move earlier um, to this place that is like, dreamy truly it's the most beautiful place i've ever lived and it's sunlit and just open and beautiful and anyway we will be giving you a new tour soon yeah, another great feature of this neighborhood is that there is recycling everywhere they've got these giant containers out on the streets there's one for paper and for plastic and for metals and for food scraps and it's like 
really organized and I, I use it all the time. They just make it really easy here. They even have it on packages. Like you can tell you sometimes like put this one in the yellow bin. It's pretty odd. That's helpful. <laughs> um, I must say another high of living here is that Barkley has been wearing a scarf every day and looking very European and very Yeah, I'd say another huge high has just been the basic reality of being able to speak Spanish here every day. This was like one of the main reasons that we moved to Spain. We really wanted to practice our Spanish and be immersed and have the chance to improve. And we get to do that. Every day that we walk out the door, it's all Spanish. It's all Spanish all the time. Um, so it feels good. And it feels good that it like feels normal already. Like we're used, our ears are getting trained to like hearing Spanish all day long which is fun. So many people here have got little little balconies out over their windows and a lot of people planted flowers and just kind of hanging plants and things, but we decided to do an herb garden. And so we've got thyme and parsley and basil and all sorts of beautiful things. Hopefully jalapenos. There's no spicy food in Spain, so we might need to grow our own jalapenos. We've got an update coming in six months on that one. <laughs> so we can just make little clippings and just add them into the cooking anytime and that has been awesome. So a little show and tell. I have to tell you that my other high of the month has been this thing. I purchased my very first little European shopping bag cart wheelie yeah. thing. And it's amazing. It goes with me everywhere because our main grocery store that we go to is like a mile away which was fun for like the first week and then by the second week carrying pounds and pounds of groceries a mile. Please. Got a little Kilos. Old. I like did the local thing and finally invested in a cute little shopping bag yeah. and it has served my needs very well. It is magnificent. Also a few fun features. It has a thermal bag that's removable. You can carry it on your shoulder. Um, and watch this. <laughs> <laughs> it folds down so you can carry it to the grocery store like this and then when you're ready to get your groceries Shazam big high So we talked about a bunch of the highs. There are plenty of those uh, So tell me about some of the lows my beautiful mm. wife <laughs> um, I mean, it's been an intense month for sure a lot a lot a lot of transition I think um, probably the biggest challenge is the one that we anticipated, and that's just starting over socially from scratch. Um, I'm sure many of you have been through this before, anybody who's moved cities. Um, but yeah, it's just a wild reality going from having this really strong and vibrant social circle in Kansas City, like just the contrast of that to literally hardly knowing anyone in the city has been a huge change. I think the reality as well that since we both work from home and we're not moving here to like an office or something where we immediately meet people, it's just become very <laughs> real to us that um, we're going to have to work at it to meet people here. But that said, we're starting to meet people slowly but surely and we have, we signed up for Spanish classes the week that we arrived, which has been awesome. Really good. The classes themselves are fantastic, but we also lucked out with like a really cool little class full of all Europeans from all different countries and they've been a good kind of like <clears throat> beginning group to yeah hang out with and help us meet new people. I think the moments when it hits home are just those normal times when you you know are either having a bad day or you've had something awesome happen and you just want to call some friends and go have a drink and hang out and talk about it. Like there have been a couple of those that, you know, or it's like a Friday night and we're like, what, what, what should we do? Oh, it's just the two of us. All right, date night, <laughs> which has been great. A nice so recovery. Great. Lots of dates. <laughs> right? So much quality time. For so all you quality, quality time, time people out there, we're getting tons of it. <laughs> which is good. This is our primary love language. So it's a good one, right? Yeah, it's been good. <laughs> Lows. <clears throat> what about you, babe? I have been surprised at how much Spanish we have left to learn. Like that's been, not being fluent has is, is been really tricky. I mean, I have such, like I have such a heart for those who have, who come to a place and know nothing of it, of the language. I mean, that has gotta be such an intense challenge and really scary. Um, but I you know I, I felt pretty proficient coming here, but I get lost all the time. I mean, they speak fast <laughs> here. And so, the accent is strong. Yeah, really different from Latin America where we've yeah. learned the majority of our Spanish. And it's actually quite different for non-native speakers. And so that has been 
humbling <laughs> to stagger our way through the days. I think it's kind of like the dailiness of it too. Like it's one thing to go on vacation and kind of like fumble your way through a language for a few days, but literally every day in just the most like random of situations like going to the store to buy eggs and I can't understand the cashier when she's trying to ask me a question. It's like the daily, could you please say that again? Could you say that slower? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Right. It's just, yeah, it's it's a vulnerable and humbling thing. And then they then they repeat like in like perfect English. <laughs> Would it be easier for me to speak to you in English then? We get a lot of that. <laughs> Mm, on also, the subject <laughs> of efficiency. I really love efficiency in life. Like, really love it. And let's just say, like, this place moves at a different pace. There's what they call, like, a manana culture here, where it's kind of like you ask someone when something will happen, and they're kind of like, oh, manana, tomorrow. Sometimes it's tomorrow, sometimes it's like three days later. I feel like our first month here has been like chasing down logistics of just getting life set up here. I mean, everything from like getting our mail to arrive took an astounding amount of time to figure out. I just still don't actually understand it. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. packages sh just show up and we're like, yeah. wow, I'm glad so, that worked out. And sometimes you get taxed on packages for no reason. You have no idea how much. Stuff like that. So the efficiency nerd in me is just kind of having to take a chill pill and roll with it, mm -hmm. which I'm mostly successful at most days. <laughs> yeah. The efficiency nerd in me doesn't actually exist, so I'm pretty <laughs> happy with it. Big low. Okay, this is like not that big of a deal, but you guys, there's no spicy food here. <sighs> None. <laughs> also, a surprising low. So we both really love Mexican food. Our first date was like seven hours over chips and salsa. We really both love chips and salsa. You guys, it's not served here. We have been to probably at least like, I don't know, six or eight Mexican restaurants so far because we really love Mexican food. And like the concept of chips and salsa just does not exist. I mean, first off, the word salsa means sauce in Spanish. So you ask for salsa and they kind of look at you blankly. And so Can we've, you be more specific? <laughs> we've even like tried to ask people, could you bring us some like the red or green salsa and some chips? We will pay you whatever. No, like, and they I, still look at you. I, I, I don't, <laughs> like, know, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I miss spicy food and chips and salsa. But we are making our own salsa now. So now it's just like a home chips and salsa yeah. sort of thing, which is better anyway. There's this blog, Give Me Some Oven, that has a great salsa recipe. We use it all the time. We'll link to it below. All right, so highs and lows. How about some woes? Like, whoa, what's been surprising? New, what didn't you expect? So most of the world, has narrowed it down to about three meals a day. That seems to be the, the general standard. But here in Spain, they seem to have innovated on this idea. <laughs> and it is now up to five meals a day. <laughs> yeah. And they eat like smaller portions. It's kind of tapas style as well. But like it goes through the whole cycle of the day. And the day is kind of shaped around these five meals, which is brilliant. <laughs> so one of the questions that we've gotten the most is about the political situation here. Yeah, what do, what do you think? What's, what's this look like for you, babe? Yeah, I mean, it's been a fascinating time to move to Spain, a fascinating time in Spain's history. Um, for a little bit of background, we moved here um, just about two weeks before Catalonia, which is where Barcelona is, declared independence from Spain. So we were here for some of the lead up to that and then some of the fallout politically afterwards. And interestingly, our apartments, both of our apartments, our first and our second one, um, are located on the main marching street. So we've literally had a front row view to these marches, these demonstrations. I mean, sometimes hundreds of thousands of people walking past our front door. Fascinating. Um, but I don't know, it's been really interesting, I think, to kind of contrast everything that we had read on the news and continue to read on our American news sources and to see what's actually happening on the ground here. Um, I think one of the main differences we've both noticed is that um, a lot of the violence is captured on the news, and there have been some violent moments for sure in the past few months here. Um, but in general, definitely since we've been here, um, the protests feel very, very passionate. Um, and just, I mean, there's a ton of cultural pride there. There's a ton of history. Um, and people are really, you know, on all sides, they are out there <clears throat> proudly speaking up for what they believe in. But there's not been a single moment that I've felt unsafe. Um, right. It's just felt very peaceful and respectful. 
a ton of passion again, but not violent. And I think the news has missed some of that. I would say though, for sure, that our posture through this whole thing has just been, you know, we are total newbies here and we really wanna learn. So we're just doing a lot of listening and when people feel comfortable talking about it, we're really interested to hear what they have to say and just kind of trying to, yeah, learn more about this beautiful country right. that we now live in. It's about time for one of those five meals. Somebody had a snack break. You're not being very Spanish. <laughs> that is a good girl. You're gonna eat the whole thing. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty good. That was a good cookie. All right, so another question. Many of you have asked about learning Spanish and how we are going about trying to learn Spanish in a new culture. Um, we're trying to do it from a bunch of different angles. I mean. <laughs> As we said, we jumped straight into Spanish classes um, as soon as we got here, which has been awesome to get to know new people, mm -hmm. but just to have a different, more conversational way of learning the language. We also went to our very first intercambio last week, um, which many expats had recommended to us. They're basically these language exchanges, which happen all over the city. We went to one just around the corner on our block at a hotel bar. And you show up and they give you a name tag with your name, your original language, and then the language you're wanting to learn. And the idea is that it's all these strangers, but you just get together, find somebody with your opposite pairing, and you just practice talking about whatever. And then every five minutes, you're supposed to change languages. So like the introvert in me was a little wary of going and small talking for a few hours, but it was awesome and we met it's a great place to meet people yeah. and it was really really great language practice we spent a lot of time in front of screens and so we decided we we're going to invest in some literature and mine is at a third grade reading level and it's about a third grader which is about my level and it's really sweet her mom just opened a bakery so we're we're learning all about her life mm. and i've gotten some good baking terminology from it Fantastic. what are you reading el principito <laughs> the and, little prince and it's great it's one of my favorite books, and uh, yeah, so it's really fun to read it in Spanish. And again, some, you know, it's got some illustrations just in case you can get lost. <laughs> Another way that we're practicing, we are currently watching Stranger Things on Netflix with subtitles. That's been one of my favorite ways to practice Spanish for years. Mm -hmm. I used to watch Friends with subtitles. Yeah, so we can like really boost our like, you know, uh, paranormal vocabulary. <laughs> yeah. She comes in really handy in just conversations. Um, another question we received from uh, a lot of you is about our Thanksgiving plans. We are in a place where Thanksgiving doesn't really exist, and yet it is a well-loved American tradition. So what are we going to do, babe? Yeah, it's my favorite holiday of the year. What? I love it. Yes. It's like the best holiday. There's no presents. It's all about food, like cooking awesome food mm. and a lot of it with people. It's about being surrounded by like friends and family, like mm -hmm. people you love. It's about gratitude. So it's not happening. <laughs> um, but we, guys, we have some plans. It's a very big deal now when we like have social engagements. <laughs> We're so new here. Um, but we have plans on Thursday night on Thanksgiving um, to go to a wine tasting with some friends. And then on Friday night, we have some plans with one group of expat friends to do kind of like a potluck Thanksgiving meal and then with a different group of expat friends to hang out on Saturday night to do something Thanksgiving -y, TBD. Um, I should also note that many classic Thanksgiving foods are not available here in Spain. For example, turkeys, not available here. Apparently we've heard you can special order them at a few markets, but you can't buy a whole turkey easily. Uh, cranberries, Cranberries, fresh cranberries, frozen, canned. They're all Pretty very good. difficult to find. A few stores carry them, I think specifically for tourists and expats. The biggest one, pumpkin puree. I've heard from many of you readers who live in <laughs> anywhere outside of the United States that pumpkin puree is very hard to come by and we experienced this here. Thankfully, we found one little store. It is kind of like the store with all the American junk food, but they sell American products and they had some canned pumpkin, which we were able to buy and make some cookies and muffins. And I'm making a pumpkin roll and a pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving. They must have known we were coming because there were towers of canned <laughs> pumpkin puree in that place. It was like half at the store. Anyway, we've talked your ear off. We could talk to you for hours. <laughs> yeah.
But yeah, like I said, we are interested in trying to do some of these monthly update videos every month-ish. Um, so if you have any questions that you would like us to answer or any topic recommendations, we are we would love to hear from you. And if you haven't already, um, feel free to subscribe to our little YouTube channel so that you don't miss a video. Um, otherwise, you can continue to follow on the blog and on Instagram for, you know, daily Spanish expat life. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, we're sending you lots of love, lots of abrazos. That means hugs. <laughs> That's an awkward hug. <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs> And we wish you all a very meaningful and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to all.